Ready Check Radio. Stand by as we get ready to serve up all your news this week in the world of gaming. Welcome to Gaming Gumbo. Oh yeah. Hello, Internet. Welcome once again to Gaming Gumbo, your weekly gaming wrap-up here on Ready Check Radio. We had last week off, and the next two weeks might be a little dicey. I'm just saying. We'll figure it out. I don't know. Maybe we'll do them a little earlier. Maybe it'll be canceled. I don't know. Finishing up a show on stage, so... Yes, it's a little fun there. But I'm your host, Mike Byrne, as always, and we're going to wrap up this week in what I thought was the more interesting gaming news, me and my cohorts going over it. This is episode 58, airing twitch.tv slash readycheckradio, Saturday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. We got chat ready to hang out with us, including Jason Winter hanging out in chat now. Still a VIP on the channel, though. Still a VIP on the channel. Uh, hope you'll join us sometime as well. If not, if you're watching on YouTube, watching on readycheckradio.com, listening on uh, iTunes, Spotify, Audible, uh, Amazon Music, everywhere else, we'd appreciate it if you could. Take a second, give a little follow, give a little subscribe, give a little comment, feed that engagement algorithm. And if you like what we do here, tell your friends. Uh, it's easy, it's fast, and it's free to support us that way, and we appreciate it so much. But thank you for joining us tonight. Also hanging out with me is the noob fridge himself, Mr. Troy Blackburn. What's up, sir? You know, it's just a uh, top, top right-hand corner kind of weekend for me now that it Jason's is. gone. I, is. I've, I've been in the top right-hand corner of all these screens all weekend long. Yeah, you I have been promoted. I'm an important man now. I have been promoted. For those of you that don't know, it's just like a thing of mine. I've done it since, well, I think since Game Breaker. I, well, before Game Breaker, I did it on uh, the free-to-play cast at MMO Bomb before I was at Game Breaker. Anytime I put camera shots together, it's besides mine, which is always in the upper left just because of main host where it's coming from, the other shots are always done in seniority order of the hosts. So little known fact. So Troy, with Jason's retirement uh, what do you call it like, like he didn't retire like he's streaming on oh. his channel he's still like he's involved on sabbatical. yeah he's he's still involved at mmo bomb and here as like a guest host occasionally like so he's not retired he's, he's he's not old enough to be retired so i don't know what you call it hiatus <laughs> hiatus <laughs> also welcoming back to ready check radio it has been far too long it's been far too long with the hiatus of Snowbound, uh, the Blizzard slash World of Warcraft show due to Blizzard's inability to keep its employees, its uh, management employees, from touching people. Um, we don't know if that's ever coming back. Although, just as a note for those of you that are Blizzard fans of games, like many of us are, including myself, just can't support them right now. Uh, we have a reveal next week. Of the expansion. So there's your Blizzard news as we welcome Dom Greco. What's up, sir? How you be? How you be? Hello. Hello. It's been it's been so long. I, I it's been too I was actually long. trying too long. to figure it out and I, I couldn't even couldn't even go back and, and figure out how long it's been since I've been on the channel. Uh it's, I think July, somewhere around there, uh, when I was just doing a couple streams here and there. So yeah, yeah it's been a while. It so, has been a while. It has been a while. It is, welcome back. Good to be back. Good it is back. good to have you back. How uh, how is your uh, your show's going? My show's going fine. I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. I'm literally exhausted. Uh, so I'm a stage actor for those of you that don't know, and I have a show called Don't Dress for Dinner opening this coming Friday. It'll run uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then the following Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So as you can see. Saturday is a linchpin <laughs> commonality <laughs> between those two weeks. So we'll see. Like if we can just go a couple hours earlier, we'll try to maybe try to do that if I'm not, you know, dead on my feet. But we'll, we'll figure it out. Worst case scenario, we won't have a gaming gumbo for two weeks and then we'll be back to normal from there on out because the show will be over. If you're in the Pittsburgh area and you'd like to come and see it, uh, look up the theater factory. Don't dress for dinner and you can get your tickets online. Love to see you. 
uh, if you are in the Pittsburgh area. But it's good to have Dom back. So here's the deal. Yod is still, obviously, a host of the show. Did not retire. Just taking care of some family stuff uh, on the side here. That's why he's been away a little bit. So welcome to Dom and to Troy as steady hosts of Gaming Gumbo here, along with myself and Yod. Uh, and having three besides myself gives me the ability to do what I've always wanted to do, uh, which was rotate. Give these gentlemen two weeks on, one week off. So that's not like they're booked every Saturday evening because everybody here is a volunteer, and I certainly appreciate it. And Unless you're me. I've been here for like a month now. <laughs> yeah, and probably will be for a few more weeks. <laughs> it is certainly appreciated, and I'm sure the viewers appreciate it too, so... Let's get started with some of the news. Uh, Sony, all over the news this week. Sony, 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 Sony. For a lot of stuff. Some good, some bad. So we talked a few weeks ago uh, in the UK. I think it was about a month ago. Uh, we talked about the UK uh, and other parts of Europe, but specifically the UK, uh, changing some laws and working with Microsoft to stop their auto renewals of the Xbox Gold membership for people that had not used it in like a year. And then they were going to get like auto emails and then an auto unenroll after a period of time. Well, guess what? Sony and Nintendo are now changing theirs following an investigation. Because remember, at that time we were like, well, Sony and Nintendo are probably going to follow suit, right? And But we weren't sure. They waited for the investigation portion. <laughs> <laughs> they, were like, they were like, go ahead. So Competition and Markets Authority, uh, based in the UK, finished its investigation into both companies. They were concerned about the same thing, the auto renewal of the PlayStation Plus membership and the Nintendo Switch uh, online auto renewal mechanisms paying for things that you're not using. So here's the deal. Sony agreed to contact customers about canceling their PlayStation Plus memberships if they lapse and haven't used it in a while. If users continue to not use their membership, Sony will stop future uh, payment processing. Nintendo is changing there, so the description's auto-renewal setting is no longer the default option for customers. So Nintendo... Kind of, Troy, not not going as far as Sony and Microsoft did, saying, look, there will come a period of time that we will shut it off. Nintendo saying, you know what? We're going to put the onus back on the customer. We just won't make it the default option. You have to purposely select auto renewal as your auto, as your payment default option. And then it's on you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> then it's all your fault. If you need uh, further proof, by the way, that these companies are not your friends and they're not on your side, there have to be outside agencies to step in <laughs> to turn off your auto renew when you haven't used something for two years. And if uh, you haven't used something for two years, and you're not realizing that money's coming out. You probably need to pl pay uh, better attention to your finances. Yeah, and to be and to be fair, I don't want to misrepresent something. While I was making light of the fact that Sony and Nintendo waited for these investigations to be completed, Xbox and Microsoft, they were investigated for the same thing. They just kind of like conceded right off the bat before things were finished and said, look, we'll change some things around. Sony, I, I don't want to leave the impression that Microsoft was not investigated yeah, as yeah. part of this. They were. They were just like, oh, we're getting out of Dodge early. We're we're done here. We're but done. They, but at this point, when the the changes are sort of their hands have really been forced, uh, yeah. Microsoft yeah. does kind of get out of the conversation a little bit. Yep. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately. Yep. Yeah. yep. I mean, on one hand, you sit here and you go, "How can you not be paying attention to your finances and and let these things happen?" But then I just remembered. I have a year subscription that I'm paying for the PlayStation Plus. Yeah. And it auto renewed on me after the year and I wasn't paying attention. And then I go, okay, well I got it now. So it's whatever. And then yeah. <laughs> I still haven't canceled it. So next I've, year it's going to do the same yeah. thing, but I still go on and get the free games because you know, it's, it's whatever, but I haven't actually played it. My PlayStation in a while. I I've done the same thing. Like Troy, I'm with you. Like if you, you have like your monthly Netflix bill and mm -hmm. your Hulu bill and this bill and this bill and shutter and you know, whatever, whatever, like that one, you sh probably should be a little more on top of, but yep. I'm not going to lie. I Dom, I had the same thing, not yep. this year, but last year, all of a sudden, and I'm sure I got an email ahead of it saying, Hey, <laughs> your thing is going to be billed on March 20th. Yeah. And that's in two weeks. 
here's the links to, to unsubscribe or, or stuff like that. And I probably just ignored it or I thought, oh yeah, I got to take care of that. Uh, but yeah, I, I pay the year too. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, where's that 60 bucks in my bank? Oh, oh, yep. okay. So I'm, I'm guilty of it too, particularly on like you said, Dom, those one year sub things. Yeah. Let me ask you this. I, I we talked a few, this is in the show notes, so I'm getting your like spur of the moment mm-hmm. opinions, guys. We talked a few weeks ago about PlayStation's reveal of their kind of online Game Pass quote quote competitor, which we all kind of agreed really probably wasn't setting the stage for a direct which is better because they were kind of going after different audiences, right? Yep. Microsoft trying to claim the audience of the newest, the the new releases, the that type of stuff and and Sony kind of saying, hey, look, those of you that want access to our extended past library, here you go. So both have their kind of merits and their weaknesses. But are we worried, and this is something we're going to talk a little bit about later when we talk about Game Pass again, but are we worried that gaming is slowly becoming what entertainment is right now? Because... I am. I cannot be the only one frustrated by having certain programs or certain movies on certain uh, streaming platforms, and having to have like four different subs for different things. Because oh, I want to go to Hulu to watch this, and go to Netflix to watch this, and go to Peacock of all fucking things to watch <laughs> this. <laughs> like, like, uh, like I like I cried, and, and I I have Comcast, so I get Peacock as part of the bundle I have. I'm not paying extra for it. Well, I say that, but the bill is high anyway, so I feel like I am paying for it. But when The Office was taken off of Netflix, I was like, oh shit, I'm actually gonna have to create a Peacock login. God damn it, this is awful. I have awful. I have Xfinity, and for whatever reason, they give me Peacock for free. So. Yeah, well, it's the same thing I have. That's Comcast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can change the name. It's still Comcast. It's still mm. crap. It's still. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, and call it Xfinity. It's still Comcast crap. I don't have cable, and I still just paid Peacock a monthly fee so I could watch WrestleMania because they own the WWE Network. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I kind of like that. I was like, well, I get WrestleMania for free. That's yeah, kind of cool. But, well, you yeah. know, whatever. But or anyway, back to the topic. <laughs> well, we're going to get signed. These, the three of us, mm. we're going to, these shows are now five hours long. Uh, oh, now I'm getting shit from Jason Winter about watching The Office. Um, and Mad Martha. Okay. All right. Let me just fade to black. Jason, if you can get past season one of The Office, you'd be much happier. Just throwing that yeah, out. Yeah, but there. that's like telling J- Jason Winter the good parts yeah. at the when you're at max level. Yeah. Like- yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm aware. I'm aware. But, you know, it's one of those shows. It's one of those. You, you got to suffer through it to get to the good stuff. And he, I mean, you can't argue with him, right? He turns around. He's like, if it's not good in season one, why would I watch it? No, more? It, it is a fair point. Like, it's a fair point. If leveling is boring, why would I continue to play it? Just, just put me at endgame. Anyway. No, let's not, Kayla. Let's not get Dom into a WrestleMania rant. Anyway, so are we worried about gaming quickly becoming that where there's, you know, if you like this type of stuff, Troy, you got to get the PlayStation membership. If you like this type of stuff, you got to go get Game Pass. If you got to get this kind of, kind of stuff, I mean, Nintendo is just kind of doing its own thing. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, they, they've all kind of been their own little creature out there. I think we're headed But to do that- we see a future where, like, developers are doing it like blizzard has a sub for all of its games like you don't pay blizzard for overwatch and world of warcraft and diablo and stuff anymore you pay 15 dollars a month and you have access to their entire library like do we see that as a potential future and is that scary or a good thing I think it's terrifying because you know what's going to happen is the Blizzard subscription is going to be separate from the Activision subscription, even though they're the same company because the Blizzard IPs are big enough to attract a certain audience and the Activision IPs attract a different audience. So those will be two different subscriptions. Uh, Unfortunately, we're seeing that a little bit already with all the studios that are being scooped up by, by Microsoft and Sony's trying to get exclusive. Everybody's like the exclusives have always been a thing, but they've, you know, for a lot of it has been sort of in-house exclusives. Now they're going out and buying these studios to pick up these exclusives. So now we're headed towards where, you know, the game pass is huge. And now PlayStation is slowly starting to make moves 
uh, to, to clean up what they already have and move in that direction, I think we're absolutely looking forward to a future where they see the success of things like Netflix and Hulu and they want that money. They, they want all the money. Yeah, so Kayla bringing up like the, the main part of this discussion where you think about it, you're like, well, how big could it get, right? There's Microsoft, there's Sony, there's Nintendo, right? And maybe you don't consider Nintendo's online service, but let's, for the sake of the discussion, say at some point they create some type of sub-library thing. Let's yeah, just, kind let's of just pretend. It. They, they kind do, of they it. do, right. So, well, how big could it get, right? That's it, that's it. Well, in theory, sure. Troy, you know, Sony and Microsoft are on a little bit of a buying spree right now. So some of these studi studios are getting gobbled up and will be put into those existing subs already. But the reality of it is, Dom, they they can't buy them all. They, they yep. just can't. Like, even if one company wanted to, even Microsoft would have a hard time getting, not maybe financially, but approval-wise, buying up all the companies you just can't do that and then somewhere out there there's some people who would just say no to that no matter what yeah yeah and we've somewhere. all we've we've somewhere. we've seen <laughs> we've seen that these these developers uh all do want to and have at one time or another a lot of them tried to basket their stuff outside of steam or other distribution platforms and launch their own launchers right now bethesda's getting rid of its that makes sense because you're now under the Xbox umbrella. You really don't need to kind of side basket your own stuff. But, you know, Try on Worlds had the Glyph launcher and Bethesda had Bethesda.net and World of Warcraft or uh, Blizzard had Battle.net. Like, I could see, you know, Square Enix sub. Oh, fuck me. That would be horrible. Mm -hmm. Like, because <laughs> I'd have to get it, right? <laughs> like, you would. Have you, there's no it. way you of all people wouldn't have it. <laughs> But is that, am, am I talking ridiculous, Dom, and just saying, hey, man, no, it's we, we've ridiculous. literally seen this happen with the entertainment industry, with television yeah. and movies. I Like, at least for, for my, my TV, right, because we, uh, Xfinity, Comcast, whatever, I have a stream box sitting in my living room that I absolutely never use. But it, it lets you log into all of the, the services and use one search engine to find everything. And it's like, oh, I want to watch Spider-Man. Okay, well, Spider-Man's on Hulu or whatever it's on. And it just automatically plays it. Like, that's great. I love that. We need something like that for gaming. And it's like, at this point, you look at it. It's like, do we really need all these consoles? Like, I, I can we just all put everything on computer? I would much rather have every person just come under, like, have Nintendo just make games. Like, because that's basically what they do anyway. They throw out hardware. It's a little unique. They still have that going for them, but like, I don't know. Just put everything on computer at this and point. And let's be honest, like, until recently, until the Switch, a couple of Nintendo's hardwares were kind of flops. Yeah. I mean, you see, you see Sony's getting in on it. Like the Uncharted games are on Steam now, um, you know, and, and Blizzard is, is probably going to go under Game Pass at some point, uh, you know, with, with their various games. Uh, I don't know. I just, I'd rather just see everything on computer because I have the, 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 PS5, I have the, the Switch. There's no point in buying an Xbox when all their games are on PC anyway. Um, but it, it, all these companies, they're just going to keep making their own things and it's going to inflate and get out of control like, yeah. like the movies. Yeah. And I am somebody that wants to own the games and I can't do that anymore. Right, that's the yeah. I still have the console. You might as well be a Neanderthal just me. roaming around in a cave yeah. to if you want to own your own games at this point. It's yeah. that's the sad reality, but it's even like movies. I can't, I mean, yeah. I can, but it's not feasible to, to own movies anymore, you know. And like, think, think back, right? Think back. All three of us were involved in Game Breaker, and that's what we're like eight to ten years removed from Game Breaker now, right. Mm -hmm. But when yeah. we were talking about things on like Twimo and stuff like that back then, mm -hmm. we the the big thing then was cutting the cord, right? Cable company or the streaming services cut the cord of cable. That was like all their advertising to cut the cord of cable. It's eighty dollars a month, a hundred dollars a month for your cable TV, and for sixteen ninety nine a month, we'll give you access to all this stuff. And everybody was like, you know, this is there's no point in having cable, man. I could spend forty dollars, have my Netflix, and have this, and I'm set. Have you looked at your bills lately? Like, Troy, do you have Netflix? I do have Netflix. Netflix do, you have the, Hulu, do you have Hulu? Netflix is the only one that I keep constantly. The rest of them actually do get rotated for us. But they um, get rotated for you. Okay. Yeah, they do get rotated. So we're usually paying for 
about like, two a month. Look at your bills anymore. I don't. Maybe I'm in the minority. I I have four. Four. Disney and Plus. If, it, I have Disney Plus. I have Hulu. I have Netflix. I'm not going to count Peacock because it's just part of my cable it's bill. Free. Yeah, yeah, it's part is part of my Xfinity. Uh, but Netflix, Hulu, uh, Disney Plus, Shutter, and you know what? I I would I would count Epidemic Sound, but that's that's totally different, right? I, that's so I have the licenses to use the music on Ready Check Radio here and stuff like that. Man, oh, and, and, look, a, and even, Amazon and Amazon. Court? You haven't even cut. Oh yeah, the court. and I still have cable. <laughs> <laughs> at least I, at least Why? I don't have cable. <laughs> I got rid of my my uh, landline too. I don't even have that anymore. Yeah, see, I have a landline. I don't. I think you could see that in the shot right there. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's that's for work. Uh, I have to have it for yeah. work because I'm software engineer. My, for my 73 global year old mother has finally gone full uh, smartphone. Mm -hmm. So it's, even she doesn't have a landline anymore. Jesus, yeah. like I have not stopped to think about this. Netflix, <laughs> Hulu, <laughs> Shutter, Disney Plus, Amazon, Epidemic Sound. My gym membership. <laughs> <laughs> all the, yeah, but that's where these companies get you is all these monthly subscriptions. You right. Know, and they just, Final they Fantasy 14. Uh, Individually, they sound cheap. Yeah, Final mm -hmm. Fantasy 14. I'm just trying to map out all the subs I have. I mean, uh, they, they have an app that you could download on your phone to put all your subscriptions in and they keep track of everything for you so you know what's going on with what. But Elder Scrolls Online. Shouldn't be, we shouldn't PlayStation get Plus. Are you still subbed to ESO? PlayStation Plus. Yes, I'm subbed to ESO. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> Please tell me you at least canceled your PlayStation Blizzard. Plus. Game Game Pass. That's 11 so far. 11 freaking subs. Yeah, Blizz is canceled right good, now. Good, good, good. Yeah, that's been canceled. The only reason that I didn't cancel the day that that news or when my sub lapsed when that news is because somebody in our raid group, uh, Dom, gifted me. Uh, yeah. a three month sub because they didn't want me to leave the raid group. Yeah. And I was like, Wah! all right, fine. I'll raid with you. Uh, <laughs> that's 11. What am I doing? And I still have cable. I, I think <laughs> after this podcast ends, you need to cancel the cable. It's time to cut the cord, Mike. It's 2022. <laughs> it's time to cut the cord. Oh, all comes uh, full circle. I had Origin, not Origin, uh, Stadia for like a day. And then I was like, yeah, no. Nah, we're done. We're <laughs> done here. We're done with this. Uh, well, so, that yeah, that doesn't even count my canceled subs. That The ones like SWOTOR, Troy, where it's like, all right, I'm going to play SWOTOR with Troy for a couple mm -hmm. of weeks and do some new dungeons and stuff, so I'll sub for a month. Like, it doesn't even count those oddball things. Those are the ones that I let recur. And that's just off the top of my head. I'm sure there's like probably two or three that I'm missing. That's 11. I mean, blessed to be able to be in that position where it's a joke and not, you know, financial ruin. But, <laughs> you know, well, I certainly can acknowledge Eddie has that. has too many subscriptions. We're not eating this month. <laughs> Jason Winter, Enjoy easy way to your get, water sandwich. get rid of all your subs, quit your job, and you won't be able to afford them. There you, there go. you go. There you go. Yeah, go. I don't know, but like going back to this, like with with Nintendo. Oh yeah, I, we were talking about games. Yeah, I sorry. Have no problem, like with Nintendo's thing, because it's like I play a lot of the games online, Mario Kart, whatever. So I'm like, there's service I'm paying for anyway. I'm gonna be doing that. PlayStation. If I'm playing a game that has to do with online, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll sub it. Like I said, mine accidentally renewed. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't be active right now. But like, I don't actively have Game Pass, even though it's a fantastic deal. Right. And I just I don't know. I don't play enough variety of games right now for that to be justified for me. But if I was playing like one single game, you know, all the time on PlayStation, that's enough justification for me to buy their online service. And then everything I get with it is just a bonus. And I sure I could pay, you know, the monthly pass and play like Sea of Thieves or whatever on Game Pass and have a blast with it. But I don't know. I just I I haven't. I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm still like that being said, I still have a free month of uh PC game pass that I haven't used one of these days. I love game pass. Anyway, back to Sony. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of the, totally one of the derailed. things. Yeah. I'm just like, Jesus. 
Cut the cord, uh, Mike. Cut the cut cord. The cord. <laughs> Just cut the cord. <laughs> Just cut the cord. I don't even know why I have it. I don't even know why. Does anybody actually use your cable? Like anyone? (laughs) So here's the thing. We'll be like comboed in with your internet. (laughs) It is. It is. But I am so far removed from a contract with Xfinity because I've had them for years and I don't re up the contract. Um, so that it doesn't matter. But uh, I bet they bug the crap out of you about that. It's always like. He, uh, we'll be going through the guide and like my daughter and I will be watching TV and it's like, okay, the office is on and we'll, oh, it's 15 minutes into the episode already. All right, we'll just pull up Peacock and start that episode over. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like we use the cable guide to determine what we're going to watch and what streaming <laughs> service it's on. <laughs> cut it. Just cut it. It's gone. <laughs> I do not sub to YouTube for no commercials. Um, I'm too much of a support the content creator baby. So, but that's a totally different discussion. We Is have often. The, isn't there a weather channel on some? Deme- well, I mean, that's that's my wife, right? That's yeah, Demina. Yeah. That's my wife. She, so she needs the weather channel, you know, because they have not invented this thing here, which actually tells me the fucking weather as soon as I open it right on it. <laughs> my, my whole alarm goes off in, in the morning and it tells me like the date, what the weather is, what it's going to be like the rest of the day. Like it just narrates to me. Put on pants. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, we have discussed on this show when it comes to like game pass and stuff like that, the long-term viability, not mm-hmm. for the consumer or for Microsoft, who, for the consumer, fine, yeah, it's perfect. For Microsoft, they don't really care. Oh, Kayla telling me. So I thought, the well, I'm going to have to look at YouTube Premium then. I actually thought they dropped the payout on YouTube Premium to content creators. But if the if it the ad payout it really is more, yeah, I'll sub. Thank you, Kayla. That's actually good information. Uh, it's been a long time since I even looked at it. Um so But we were more concerned with the, the long-term viability as far as being a developer and getting your games on there. And we've talked, Troy, about this before, where, like, maybe for indie games, you know, kind of works, gets your game in front of more eyeballs than it ever possibly would have gotten in front of, and so maybe somebody picks up that $10, $15, $20 purchase. But the big draw to Game Pass and for any of these services is going to be the day one big daddy AAA release titles that people want. That's what gets you to sign up for the service, and then experience some of these other titles that maybe you wouldn't have bought, and now you're willing to shell out a couple of bucks X months down the road when it rotates off of the service and you have to buy it. Well, we have a little bit of information on that from the PlayStation Plus side of things. So I find this really interesting for a few reasons, which we'll, we'll break down here. Oddworld Soulstorm was the uh, one of the free games... Um, via PlayStation Plus for April 2021, okay? That happened to be, due to delays, the same month that the game actually launched. All right? Stay with me. Stay with me. Oddworld Inhabitants, the name of the company, Lauren Lanning, founder, came out and said the game was downloaded close to 4 million times through PlayStation Plus, significantly more than the studio's expectation of it being downloaded 50 to 100,000 times, and that this was devastating. Their, Lauren's quote, not mine. Mm. Devastating for sales of the game, according to Lauren. There was nothing malicious, they said, about the deal with Sony, but circumstances made it a double-edged sword we're hitting a number of legacy technical debt issues and talent issues they needed money to finish off the project sony approached them about being one of the free titles they said great now we don't know the details of these things but most of us assume right like i give this as microsoft i give this to four hundred thousand dollars let us put your title on game pass deal or no deal type thing you know one-time payment is probably how most of this works Mm -hmm. Now, they were supposed to deliver the game in January. So if it had come out in January, it would not have been free until April. That part was already scheduled. But the problem was the game got delayed. 
So when they were looking at a January release date, PlayStation 5s, were they're still rare, but they were even more rare, right, as far as who owned them. And they kind of took the mentality of, we need money to finish our title, and we don't really expect a ton of PlayStation 5 sales anyway because there's not a lot of PlayStation 5s out there. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and take Sony's money. We'll finish our project. We'll actually get to launch. We're supposed to deliver in, in January. How many could we possibly sell? Well, then the game got delayed back during COVID stuff when it was, you know, much bigger. Uh, and it slipped to April and got downloaded almost 4 million times. No additional money goes to the developer. When we look at this, guys... What does this what does this mean? Like is this just unfortunate circumstances for this one-off situation? Is this dude, your game wasn't going to come out anyway. Like if you didn't take Sony's deal, you admitted your game wasn't going to be finished. Like you didn't have the money to finish it, so you kind of had to take this deal if you wanted to finish, whether it got downloaded 50 times or 4 million times. Or is it an example of what we're kind of thinking could potentially happen where economically it doesn't make sense for some of these uh, mid-tier to AAA studios to affiliate their titles with these services because it'll cost them money to do so. What do you think, Troy? Uh, let's let's be clear about one thing up front. Four million downloads is a lot of downloads for a game. Um, yeah. Now, granted, it was because it was free, but there are AAA games who launch with goals of like two million in, in right. the first well, uh, in the first uh, little bit of launch window. And of course, even in the interview, if you read the interview, they were not trying to say we yeah, would yeah, have yeah. sold four million copies. Right. Like that's not what they were saying. Yeah, but I think that's kind of where I was going. Is like they're not like, gonna, look, we lost yeah. out on four million yeah. times forty dollars or fifty dollars. That's not what they were yeah. saying. But it was certainly a much more a sales impacting number than they were ready to accept when they took the yeah, Sony absolutely. deal. Absolutely, they they weren't going to sell four million just for for those watching. Uh, that wasn't going to be a number of of games they were going to sell on their own. But they probably did miss out on revenue because they took that flat payment and they just happened to come out at a time when their game was going to go free. Um, now, now, granted, that thing probably got a lot more advertisement from Sony because it was a, a launch month uh, item that they could put on the PS Plus for free to give out. So it probably got more advertisement than even if it would have if it had like already been out for a few months and come out in April. Uh, this was a big deal. It's a new game coming out that you can get your hands on. We've already talked about. That's what people want, man. They want those brand new games on these subscription services that they can try out day one. And circumstances being what they are, that's what people wound up with. And it wound up being a a, a recipe for success for Sony. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but unfortunately, not so much for the developers who just right. took that one-time payment. And Dom, you said earlier, and it's the same thing I do and probably many people in our chat do mm -hmm. and, and many people watching this on YouTube because I'm sure there's hundreds of thousands watching it on YouTube. If you could all click like while you're there, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> there's a big difference between redeeming that free game and, yeah. and buying that free game, right? Yeah. I, can't, I can't tell you how many Epic Game Store games and PlayStation Plus games I quote-unquote own. Right. That I probably don't even know I own right stuff now. Stuff you get from Twitch, yep. oh man, countless. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that, that that's it. Like I I downloaded this because it was one of the free games. I haven't booted it up. I haven't played it. I I don't have any intention to play it. I might play it. It might happen one day, but I don't have any. Like so, I'm I'm part of that that four million. But am I really? Like, should I be counted? Yeah, and, and you were never somebody that was going to go buy this game. No, now, never. This game, uh, just for disclosure's sake, I did buy this game mm -hmm. uh, for the, the PS5. But that's because I, I, I really like the Oddworld series. So I was a customer regardless uh, and, and bought a physical, and I'm a physical box baby too. Yep. So I wanted a physical box. Uh, so, but that's a very, you know, rarer circumstance. Uh, so are there people like me that were planning on buying it that probably didn't because they found out they were going to get it for free? Yeah, I'm sure there were some in there. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. So did it cost you sales? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. But did you gain sales? 
I don't know. I mean, I'd you didn't so. out of this. You didn't out of this four million, but did the exposure through advertising and through four million people potentially playing your game and telling a friend this was a really great game? I got it for free last month. You'd have to buy it now, but you should. It's a good game. Look, and let's be know. honest. We're talking about it, and we wouldn't have. Yeah. I and, mean, and th this game would have made this show. And how many people got it as a free game? It was like, huh, it's free. Let me try it. Ended up absolutely loving it and may now go back and buy some of the previous games and all the future games. You know, like. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a mathematical fallacy there, right? Uh, definitely. Yeah. And, and Kayla used the word fallacy, too. Uh, there's definitely a mathematical fallacy in saying four million potential sales or anything like that. And yeah. again, they were careful. They did say, look, we know four million people weren't going to be buying our game. But we do believe that we had budgeted for fifty to a hundred thousand free copies, and we ended up giving away four million free copies. You can't convince us that some of that didn't hurt our sales, and and maybe it did. But honestly, as much as I love the Odd World series, I also have to look at this and go, dude, whatever it cost you in sales. You your vision wasn't gonna be realized. Yeah. Like you were this game was not coming out if you Dead didn't take that Sony deal. By your own admission, you were out of cash. Mm -hmm. So are you, you know, you can cry over it now. I get it. I'd be a little miffed too. You took a deal and you you thought it was a good deal at the time. It's like it's, it just reminds me because I watch a lot of cable guys, because I have cable still. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Troy, you it just reminds cable guide. It just reminds me of like the JD Wentworth commercials. <laughs> it's like, do you want the cash annuity or do you want a lump uh, sum right now, baby? <laughs> do you want a lump sum right now? I give you four. And I need it now. <laughs> I need it now. I just kind of feel like the Odd World team was just like called JG Wentworth <laughs> eight seven seven cash now. <laughs> Uh, you know there's something wrong when a jingle like that is stuck in your head and you haven't seen a commercial in like five years for it dude i sing i sing local commercial jingles to myself all the time I, I still, the, other, the other night i'm sitting in discord and i'm just Eight, start seven, singing seven, out of seven. nowhere i'm like baby bottle pop baby bottle pop. <laughs> like, where does that come from <laughs> it's skip it <laughs> hey now kids come gather around Round. See what just skipped into town. into town Skip it Skip it Come on everybody just skip it Anyway <laughs> Head on apply directly to the forehead Head on apply directly to the forehead like, Head on head on head on Ah Kayla <sighs> I have altered the deal Pray I don't alter it further <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! What's next? Oh god! Sony, yes. Sony. I don't even know at this point. <laughs> Sony on a bit of a buying spree. We've talked about that before, but some interesting developments this week, maybe. Right. So what we have here is a banner shot of Sony's kind of logo uh, banner. And this is last year's. And usually, you know, it kind of marquees their first-party titles all the way through. Well, this week, they dropped one. And if you look at the far left, you'll see that somebody got replaced with uh, Death Stranding. So this led to all kinds of speculation, gents, that, hey, Sony's on a buying spree. Are they picking up Kojima Productions? Which I think on the surface, on the very surface, you can kind of look at and say, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. You know, so Sony and Kojima have had a nice working relationship since he's mm -hmm. left Konami. You could argue that Death Stranding is really only a thing because of that relationship with Sony at the time when he was getting Kojima Productions off the ground. Maybe something happens with Silent Hill. We've heard rumors of Sony kind of brokering the peace between Kojima stop, and Konami a little bit. 
Stop teasing me. I don't. You know, we've heard all of these rumors. So maybe, maybe it makes sense. Maybe it makes sense. I'm still very salty about Silent Hills. Still very salty. However, within less than 24 hours, Kojima came out and said, hey, whoa, that banner uh, that, that I also tweeted, like, I didn't want to, like, I, I, I seem to have invited misinterpretation, mm. but Koji Pro has been and will continue to be an independent production studio. Kind of saying, nope, no, 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 I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Did not mean to... But Koji's also a liar, right? Uh, Kojima is also... <laughs> he's also a liar, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Sony actually bought the abandoned dev. No, they were just abandoned. Um, Fiery Duck, by the way, thanks for the follow. Fiery, I thought you were already a follower. Did you leave and come back? I'm hunting you. I'm hunting you. Are you um, Yeah. So what do, you, what, do you, what do you put it at, Dom? Is there a chance Kojima Productions becomes part of Sony? Or is Kojima telling the truth this time? Just this once, ever. No, no he's never telling the truth. <laughs> I, cannot, I can't believe anything out of his mouth. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Either way, like, like uh, it, it's one of their flagship like games. Like You think of Death Stranding and, and you think of PlayStation. So whether or not they're actually under the banner, I think is irrelevant for the literal banner. Um, right. I personally would love to see Kojima working with Sony in because that, that's basically what's happening anyway. Right. Yeah. It changes nothing either way. It really doesn't. You know, like he's going to continue to make games for 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 PlayStation. They have a very good working relationship. Yeah, they do. No uh, doubt. The, the real question is, is what's happening with Konami. Right. That's that's what we want. We all want Konami to be a PlayStation exclusive. And then we want Kojima over there. That's what we all want. Troy. You know, as an MMO player, it wouldn't be the first time that somebody has told us straight to our face that no, this company does not own us and then come to find out they totally own them. <laughs> <laughs> so it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me at all. If Sony, at least, yeah, you guys, you guys know game. Columbus Nova never bought daybreak, right? <laughs> never, not one time that never yeah. happened. Yeah. Never mm -hmm. happened ever, ever. I kind of agree, <laughs> Kayla. Wouldn't the ultimate lie be telling the truth? <laughs> if, you, uh, if you always think someone is going to lie, then telling the truth will put them off the scent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is true. That is, it is true. true. It is true. But maybe Coach. What? what was it? Concrete Genie? Like, I I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I've never even heard of the game. I'm not going to lie. Yep. So it, we'll it deserved to be replaced, in my opinion. Finally, I was, I was wondering if, was a, a if I was the only one who didn't even know what, like, I saw what got replaced. I was like, what? Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I literally have no idea yeah, what the game's never, about, how it plays, anything. It. I have no opinion on it, but it's not as recognizable as Norman Reedus's face right there. So, true. True. Uh, and finishing up on our whole Sony and Xbox Game Pass and all that stuff discussion here. Uh, great. I, I thought it was a pretty good article by Wes Fenlin over on PC Gamer. Go check it out. Headline is Game Pass can't stay this good a deal forever. And we talked about kind of the developer side of this uh, a little earlier. But looking at it from our side, there's already rumors that Microsoft is going to be considering price hikes for Game Pass already. And they're just rumors so far. But uh, those rumors tend to... Like, I haven't heard a rumor of Netflix th talking about increasing its sub price and then not had Netflix increase its sub price. So, yeah. like, <laughs> can Xbox Game Pass... Or, or can Game Pass stay that big a deal? Uh, uh, that great a deal? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I personally think it's it's a not a sustainable, but I mean Phil Spencer, who would know, has come and said it's very sustainable as it sits today. But of course he's going to say that, right? Yeah. It's a PR. He's not going to be like, uh, <laughs> "Gang, we not feasible." Yeah, we really screwed up, dude. We like forgot to carry a six, and man, <laughs> this ain't working. <laughs> this ain't working. I mean, he's not going to say anything besides that, but. In 2014, Netflix was $8.99 for the standard sub. It's up to $15.49 for the standard sub right now. Mm -hmm. So in an eight-year period, 
we've we've gone up, you know, six and a half bucks yeah. per month. Can Game Pass stay at its current price point at you know what is it, ten and fifteen dollars for its different tiers? Uh, I don't think so. I, I legitimately just don't think so. It, it, uh, I I think the rumors are true, and we're gonna have a price hike, which is then gonna start making some people really upset. Really it, upset. It's gonna depend on what deal Microsoft has with the developers. If it's like a like they pay money every so often, if it's a one time thing, if it's a one time thing, then they probably can get away with this model for quite a while. But if it's like every so often, they have to throw them a little bit, you know, of the the revenue. It absolutely has to go up. So, so hold on. This is important, I think. Kayla is pointing out something that we should add to the discussion here, but I don't think ultimately changes anything, and, and I'll, I'll tell you why, in my opinion, in a second here. So Kayla saying Game Pass is also subsidized by console sales, like $35 per month Game Pass that comes with the consoles. So, yeah, when you do buy a console, and uh, I've seen it on new computers, too. Uh, I just bought a laptop for remote streaming, Mm -hmm. And it came with a Game Pass uh, freebie, whatever. Yes, they are. And, and on the PC, I'm not arguing the PC side of this. This is the console side of this. While it is subsidized a bit by the sale of the console, the sale of the console is generally not generating any profit anyway. Yeah. So to say it's subsidizing it, it that's that's a little bit of a misnomer. When you're talking about the PC end, like that laptop I bought that I spent, I think like eighteen hundred or two thousand dollars on, it was a gaming laptop. I am sure they made their profit on that, yeah. right? They absolutely made their profit, and if they use some of that profit to subsidize Game Pass to further that development, yes, totally agree with Kayla. On the console side, it's the the console isn't isn't really subsidizing it much, but it is helping in the respect of can we get somebody to sign up for Game Pass because they bought a console and we gave it to them for free? So yeah, there, there's a little bit of a, an overlap there, it's, definitely. It's the gateway drug. You know, they, <laughs> they got to give you just a little bit to get you hooked, and then you keep coming back. That's why I keep yeah. not activating mines because I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think it can stay the price point. I think in, in the next four months we have a price hike. I don't think it matters whether it's viable or not. I think price increases are going to happen. This is a company a company looking to make money. And even if it was 100% profitable right now, prices are going to go up. They don't want some of the money. They want all of the money. Don't forget that. These companies are not your friends. All right. I guess we didn't lose Jason Winter. <laughs> <laughs> don't mess with Disney, gang. Club Penguin. Dude. <laughs> Club Penguin gone. Club Penguin, another uh, unofficial it's been gone for one. For a while, hasn't it? It was well, the, the official one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, Club Penguin rewritten, which had a lot of players, a lot of players. Yeah, Disney finally got a hold of them, and they were like, "Nah, nah." So uh, overseas, following a complaint under copyright law, Pipsu has seized a gaming website as part of an ongoing investigation. London Police Intellectual Crime Unit got involved. They actually arrested a few individuals. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Disney not playing around. No. Look, if you haven't, if you've never paid attention, Disney is infamous for beating down people who they even think might be messing with their IPs. Do not fuck with the mouse. Mm -hmm. Ever. Continuing I mean, its miscellaneous news, gents. Can you imagine if they just had the little foresight that COVID was coming and kept that thing open? Like, <sighs> imagine, imagine how much money that they would have pulled in for that. Continuing with other miscellaneous news, I have never been so conflicted, gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, this story intersects my life in, like, eight different ways, well, right? While, and all my you, interests. While you tell us this, can you can you do a card trick for us at the same time? No, I'm too broken up about it. Okay. So, Magic Man, although uh, sounding like some 12-year-old gave me my online handle, uh, is not just that. I am, in fact, a magician. I have been since I was 12. Many of you have seen me do things on stream. Some of you in person. Um, close up, cards, coins, stage, sawing women in half, making them float, 
I do it all, right? Have for a very long time. Yes, get paid for it. Been to the Magic Castle. Been to the Magic Circle overseas. Very involved. Teaching students throughout the years. Magic classes at the Magic Store I worked at. That type of stuff. Very involved. Love it. Member of the Society of American Magicians. All that fun stuff. The Magic Castle, if you don't know, is an entertainment venue in uh, Hollywood that you can go and, you know, have a drink, sit down at a parlor or a stage and, and watch some magic. There's a hotel there, too. All kinds of magic artifacts, you know, from Divernon and Houdini and you know, all kinds of just history and stuff. Secret paths throughout the castle and everything behind bookcases and all that stuff. It's a great place. But obviously, like other performance venues, has really struggled over the last two years because, you know, we couldn't go anywhere. Um, and it was unfortunate because the Magic Castle was building a little bit of a bank to go ahead and buy its property from the owner so that they would own it. But had to use that, those, those rainy day funds for a rainy pandemic uh, and just to keep themselves alive. Randy Pitchford, CEO, Gearbox, now owns the Magic Castle. And you might wonder why. Why the hell would you want to buy that? Like, if it's not performing revenue-wise enough to buy itself, why would you want to buy it? Well, Randy Pitchford is also a magician. I have only seen a handful of things that Randy has done that are streamable or you can find them on YouTube, and I was not impressed, let's just say. I was not impressed. That's not to say he's bad. I don't know if he's bad. Those performances weren't great. <clears throat> they weren't appropriate for the venue he was doing them for. The patter wasn't great. The performance and execution wasn't great. And he's freaking Randy Pitchford. <laughs> You don't know he's not an incredible human being. This is a guy that his own company is accusing him at one point of stealing $12 million from it, of being abusive verbally and sometimes physically, allegedly, to employees or contractors or voiceover actors, of accusing Game Informer of lying about him when he said a game would not have microtransactions. And then it went ahead and did, and he said, oh, no, you guys knew I was talking about loot boxes, which it does, the game doesn't have. Why would you, in his tweet, sorry for the language, why would you fuck me like that? He's also the one that lost a pen drive with confidential company information on it, and when it was located, it also had porn on it. <laughs> There were allegations that people in some of the porn footage were underage. Those allegations kind of went away, so I kind of feel like they verified everybody was over 18 and, and was just, like, using the barely legal tags, stuff like that. Not that I would know anything about what that means. Like, I don't know what a barely... What's a barely legal tag? I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. Com confidential company prawn, yeah. Not a great human being. Knows Penn Gillette from Penn and Teller. And apparently Penn, uh, who I respect tremendously, was like, Randy, you got to be the guy. You got to rescue the place. So I'm super conflicted, gents. Yeah. Because I do like that somebody bought it. Well, I do like that somebody that, regardless of whether I think he's a good performer or a good human being, he does seem to have a respect for the history of the art and so wants to preserve that. If I had the money... I would absolutely do it. Like I can't, right. or if, if I was in his financial spot, I probably would have done the same thing. Doesn't he also, didn't he propose at, at the yeah. magic castle? So yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. like some sentimental attachment to it as well. So I don't think he, but it's Randy Pitchford. Oh, I'm well aware. I'm just saying, I don't think he's going to do anything malicious to the place. And like, no, I don't know, either. Like, like I know. don't, I think this is the one time I want to give Randy a little bit of credit and say, you know what? I might not like you in what you yeah. do in Gearbox. And you know what? I might not even like you as a person, right? right? I've never met the guy. 
But based on stuff that is publicly available, we probably wouldn't be homies. Uh, but I, I feel like his intention is good on this one. And I'm glad the Hopefully. place is, is being saved and preserved and will still continue to entertain. But it's Randy Pitchford, Troy. You know, uh, d- does this make Randy Pitchford Magic Man's Magic Daddy? Ooh. Should we just Ooh. change your name to Mike Pitchford now? Ooh. Because you're, you're, Randy's your, your father. <laughs> I mean, at least at least Burton doesn't have any extra like letters or numbers in his handle, right? You can just change it to Magic Man Pitchford. That's probably available. Oh, my God. I... Yacht will be back next week, whether he likes it or not. Because <laughs> Troy is gone. Troy is just gone. I need to get a week off, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Might be more than a week the way you're pushing it. <laughs> Have you guys ever been so mad at a game that you broke something? Like yes. in real life, have you, Troy? Oh, like, what yes. happened? Oh, yes, absolutely. You uh, mean- it was Wow Arena, and I absolutely we lost at the very last second. It was down to me and a shaman, and it was whether or not my channeled arrow shot went off from my hunter or his heel went off, and his heel went off, and then he hit me with an instant ability, and we lost. And I absolutely smashed my keyboard to pieces. <laughs> did you really? I did. Dom, you break anything? I've never, uh, I've never broken anything over a game, no. Um, but, but I will say that uh, Magic Man Mike, uh, and he, he rages anytime I even mention Marvel's Avengers. He's such a dick. So, Gaming Gumbo is now a solo show. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. <laughs> I'm gonna do this Joe Rogan style. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> Just be me talking into a mic for an hour, occasionally with one giving, other person in the room. Misinformation. <laughs> yeah. Constantly. Constant misinformation. But it's Randy Pitchford. <laughs> I bet he doesn't have cable. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Dom, you wanted to mention. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah, I, <laughs> I should I should actually show the audience why I asked if you've ever broken something. In a <laughs> I was just gonna skip it. <laughs> <laughs> Ever get so mad at a game you broke something? Cool. Next question. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> this show is off the rails. Uh, here's why I'm showing you this <laughs> or asking you this. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this comes from Twitter. Aliyah Zafari posts somebody just enjoying a fine game of fifa just enjoying a fine fine game of fifa how did somebody determine that that was fifa that screen is so washed out (laughs) yeah i assume (laughs) that they know them i'm gonna assume that they know them okay let me see why is my b-roll footage not playing do i not have it on loop i I, like i have a hard time like calling this a like a fit of rage i really do he well, it seemed like oh, oh, he, he wasn't aiming it at yeah, the TV, oh, but he did yeah. slam that controller. Like, he, got, he got a little, like, frustrated, and, like, he didn't, like, smash it down as hard as he could. Like, it was just kind of like a, you know, I dropped it a little forcefully, and it just happened to, like, ricochet no, at the right angle. No, no, no. That, that is not a fit of rage. I don't know why the footage isn't playing, but it's fine. Uh, he spikes the controller off to his right. It bounces on a stupid angle and slams into the TV and breaks the TV is what happens. Uh, so I'll just describe what happens because the B-roll is not playing for some reason. Uh, kick it, kick it. Nope, still not working. Because that's so, the yeah. show we're having. But Troy, he, like, at, at the best circumstance, that controller's dead. Like, that controller is dead. He, it's not like he just, like, casually threw it Next yeah, to him, he, Dom. He that control Dom, that he spiked that like he just scored in the playoffs. Mm. Control like, is still <laughs> glowing. It's fine. And it took a wacky bounce, man. It, it took did. a it wacky did. bounce. I didn't uh, even realize what happened the first time I watched it, to be honest. And it was just like, whoa. I had to go back and watch it a couple times. There, but I'm going to go ahead and link the tweet so chat can at least check out the video. Yeah. but uh, like, If you're watching on Ready Check Radio or YouTube, 
rip. You don't get to see the video. <laughs> I've seen people rage and break stuff, and this is mild compared to that. This is like oh, his reaction is definitely mild, but he spikes that controller hard. That yeah. controller's dead. Like he totally killed it. There, or there's pieces of it like that he his dog finds and stuff. Uh, Kingdom Hearts four, maybe gonna dip into Star Wars. I'm going to uh, abstain from this part of the conversation, let you two chime in on it, because you can see my thoughts in full over on our last episode of the, the Relic Grind last Monday. By the way, that will be back. Remember, there is no Relic Grind this Monday. It's tech week for my show. We will be back the following Monday and then kick to well, Thursdays back to normal. So, Since Mike's going to stay out of this conversation, Troy, let me ask you, is adding Star Wars to Kingdom Hearts, is that is that a little forced? I don't think it pushes the boundaries a little bit now. Uh, Obviously, it's a Disney uh, franchise. I I hate my job! (laughs) (laughs) Troy, you didn't even hear what he said, did you? No, what did he say? Go ahead and ask him the question again, Dom, slowly. I must have missed something. Troy, is is adding Star Wars to Kingdom Hearts a little forced? Oh, my God. Is Is that what we're doing today? That just, that's just been the whole show. It's just it's, this is just what it is. Yes, it's yep. a little forced. Oh my god, punny, talk punny. <sighs> I'm done. Let's go to game of the week. Talk nerd. Oh, uh, okay. Hold on. They couldn't. They Have couldn't you hear the- you. They couldn't hear you because the intro was up. Oh, Troy okay. has asked me. To take it back a step before Game of the Week, we will not do Game of the Week yet. Troy wants to rant about something. I don't know what do, it is, so you here you go. Picture, do you have the picture of this that we're that he's talking about here? Uh, I do not queued up for this show. I had it for the Relic Grind. I'll grab okay. it again while you're talking. Okay, so basically there's an article up that says that, you know, in the Kingdom Hearts trailer, there was the foot of an ATST. in uh, And the footage of Kingdom Hearts and like a sort of a foresty jungle. Can can we just nerd for a second? Because that is not the foot of an ATST. It does not even remotely look like the foot of an ATST. That is the biggest reach of all reaches. An ATST has a foot. Uh, most of the walkers, especially the two-legged ones, have bird legs where they come in. The foot is like this, and they come in at a 45-degree angle, not a 90-degree angle like's in that picture of that piece of metal. That is some sort of steam vent. Not only that, but at the foot of an ATST is not just a round hoof like that it has a point on the front it has basically what you might want to consider toes on the front it has a hill on the back that looks nothing like an atst foot that looks nothing like a walker foot where are these people getting this stuff from does it one day is there going to be star wars in kingdom hearts yes probably but if this is all you've got to go on this is nothing why was this even an article this is trash (laughs) thank you Tell me how you really feel. It's been a while since I really whoa, got to let whoa, I saw it. something. The, the thing moved. So. <laughs> you got it to move. The I know. The controller. The B-roll freaking played. Like, <laughs> what the hell? Uh, and now it's not again. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> anyway, here's the picture Troy's talking about. Yeah. And you can see that in the is upper. Not the up in the top walker. right corner. Yeah, I got to not put it Even in the some of the walkers that it right could here. be the foot of, it is entirely too small to even be remotely considered any sort of Imperial walker. Yeah. That is the biggest reach that I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I wouldn't be opposed to Star Wars in Kingdom Hearts. I, w- I wouldn't even be opposed to Marvel in Kingdom Hearts. I- I'd be fine with either of them, even though they're not like official Disney properties. I mean, they are, but not like, legacy disney properties wait watch i think i see his thumbs moving yeah it worked (laughs) b-roll baby troy's just he's had enough come on that's that's so casual and then he's just like defeated troy's leaving too i have it on loop but it's not looping i don't know whatever now let's go do game of the week (laughs) 
Game of the week is the way we end every episode here of Gaming Gumbo. Each of our three hosts are going to give you a game. Could be a board game, could be a card game, could be a mobile game, video game, whatever. Something we're playing now, played in the past, or never played before, but think you should check out. And then in the comments, when you let us know on readycheckradio.com or on YouTube about your thoughts on all of the things we discussed today, you can also let us know which of us gave you the best recommendation. Dom, we're going to start with you. What do you got? Well, this is a game that uh, I actually had a uh, the pleasure of writing a, a first look for on MMO Bomb. Uh, this this would be Goose Goose Duck. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Among Us, uh, it, it is a social deduction game. You know, like those little bean people, space beans that you had in the the splash screen. You know, like that. Except these these are geese, and and instead of imposters, you got ducks. And uh, this this. This game is just absolutely unbelievable. I cannot talk about it and stress enough. Uh, instead of just regular uh, roles and stuff in the game, they have like special roles like Among Us started to add. But instead of like the the four that Among Us put in or three that they put in for their game, uh, I think Goose Goose Duck is currently sitting at 36 different roles uh, with even more on the way. There's like seven maps, six maps. Six, there's six maps, I, I believe, uh, with more on the way, and uh, it's so good. It's so good. You guys got to play it. Uh, full disclosure, you are part of that team, but not in a financial way, right? Correct. I, I am one of the community moderators for, for Goose Goose Duck. All right. Um, full, just full disclosure. Yeah. He doesn't make any money out of you trying the damn thing. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Troy, what you got? Uh, continuing uh, my foray into tabletop games uh, this week. Something I'll be playing here in about the next 10 minutes as my buddy just showed up at the back door. Marvel Champions, the living card game from Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, as you know, I'm not a fan of TCGs where you got random purchases and you have to collect things. Everything you need comes in the box. Play as different Marvel heroes, take on different Marvel villains. Uh, through deck building, you can create your own deck. They've got their own specialized decks for the heroes. Then you can add on to that particular deck. That way it feels like Spider-Man, but you've got some freedom to sort of customize the way you play. Feels like Thor. Feels like Captain America. There's so many heroes out right now. They're constantly releasing expansions. Marvel Champions, just buy the base box. That'll get you started. It has everything you need inside. Troy, chat uh, arguing against you, by the way, on your whole ATST thing. Uh, hey, if you look at the back of a reaching. foot of an ATST, it looks exactly like that. Still There's screenshots reaching. being put in there. I mean, what you are reach. you have struck a nerve. You have struck a nerve. What I'm going to go with Horizon uh, Forza Horizon 5. I played it on stream last uh, yesterday for a MMO Bomb. By the way, go check out the Always Online podcast. We welcome Anthony Jones, our, one of our new writers, as a guest on the show. I uh, hope you enjoyed that as well. And I just forgot how much I actually enjoyed playing that game. Definitely one you should check out. We will keep you posted on the next two weeks of Gaming Gumbos. So make sure you're following us. Twitter dot, uh, Twitter.com slash readycheckradio, or RC radio, sorry, R-C-R-A-I-D-E-O. That way, you'll always know when we're going live. Until next time, Dom, where can everybody find you? Um, you can find me on the internet. Um, somewhere on Twitter. I don't know. I'm down there. It's Zista for now. There you go. <laughs> Troy! Uh, everything I do goes through Twitter at NewFresh. Check me out on MMO Bomb on Twitch TV every Wednesday, streaming uh, some fun online multiplayer games. Chat, don't go anywhere. We've got Torchwick coming up right after the show with his stream. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. I, I just want to bring something up because it wasn't really mentioned earlier. Uh, oh, please. I swear. If this is, uh, I'm going to fire everybody. I'll just fire of all of you. ATRT? You AT you already mentioned ATST, but you're not talking about the recon transport, the two legged things that the Imperial stand on. It's more of a suit that could easily be the back of an ATRT foot. Nope. Now Troy's yeah, no, looking at pictures. They have a foot shape that's very similar to the ATST. They they have like a third yeah, no, vertical like a leg thing the going on. Leg makes a lot more, the vertical leg makes a lot more sense, and the back of an ATRT foot is rounded like a hoof. The front would be more toe like though. Stay tuned after the show when we argue about Star Wars for the next. I'm just going to say, regardless, <laughs> I'm siding with Troy on this one just because his his uh convict it was so he was so adamant about it. And, that, and that's it. 
All right. Right. See, that is just further proof that you don't need to know what you're talking about. It's mm -hmm. just 10% what you say, <laughs> yeah. 90% how you how say you it. Exactly. <laughs> Torchwick, what are you streaming today, boss? I'm pretty sure you know. I do. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell him? No, you can. Okay. Well, I'm going to be racing him at a Legend of Zelda, old NES classic. I'm going to lose horribly, but we're going to have some fun along the way, hopefully. We shall see who wins. So, chat, stay tuned for that. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me right there at Magic Man One, but more importantly, follow at RC Radio and get all the tweets. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you on the servers later. <laughs>